it was a very special time and place, man. And how monumental was it in your development? And, you know, I, I'm not a Memphian per se, but I, I lived in Midtown for one year. And Memphis always, even though I'm from a small town of 500 in Mississippi, and Memphis is obviously much bigger than that, Memphis always kind of had that small town feel to me. And Hold so, it. you know, what I, what I'm imagining happened back in the 80s when you were coming up is it even had more of that, man. And so it seems to me that... Only in Memphis could you meet all these people who were on Mount Rushmore of the blues, right? Absolutely. B.B. I mean, King and Albert King, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. And that had to be just an amazing confidence boost for you, right? It was. I mean, you know, I, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder uh, at that point, and I was kind of walking around like my shit don't stink, and, uh, you know... Uh, and then I got fired. And when I got fired from that band, then that, you know, that kind of like and that chip got knocked off pretty quick. And Albert was Albert was brutal. I mean, I was I was the fifth drummer in two months. And um what was hilarious was uh he we got to open for BB actually. And uh and BB Albert wanted to introduce BB to me after the gig and so he called me over and he was talking to bb and when i walked up bb kind of looked at me like knowingly like he recognized me and when he shook my hand he said oh, i remember you i still got your phone number and i was just like that was that was the validation that i needed right and then like a couple of nights later we were in memphis and uh my mother contacted me she called me one afternoon and said that she wanted to come down to the venue to meet albert she was going to bring the family and as she wasn't staying for the show she had kids and everything she just wanted to meet albert king and that was you know every time i played with somebody that was famous mom always wanted to meet him you know and uh so she could go back and tell her girlfriends you know my son you know he's doing this and he's playing with this person i got to meet him it was very sweet and um so I contacted Albert. He lived at the he lived upstairs at the Peabody Hotel, and the club that we were playing at was adjacent to the Peabody. Um, it's not there anymore. It was called Peabody Alley, and it was just like a supper club. So guests of the hotel would come, and they would all be all dressed in suits and ties, and we'd be up there playing the blues, you know, in dressing suits. And I wore a tuxedo, and, and you know, he's up there calling me, <laughs> and, so, and man, it was hilarious, man, and. So we're in, before the gig, we go down to the lobby, and my mom is is in the lobby with her family. So I I I got the house phone and I called up to Albert's room and I said, Mister King, um, my mother's in the lobby. She'd like to meet you before the show. And he came downstairs and was like a different man all of a sudden. He put his arm around me, and my mother's like crying. She's like, Oh my God, you know, thank you for giving my son this opportunity. You know, I love your music. Blah blah blah. He said, oh, thank you, Ro Rosa. Your son, George, is doing such a great job. And I was like, he hasn't called me by my name in, you know, a month. Like, he knows my name? He hasn't called me. He called you, the, you know, yeah, he's been calling me in the, and And uh, <laughs> he's like, your son's doing such a great job. And, uh, and then, you know, we had to go into the club. Now, let me back up. Uh, several days before this, the guys in the band pulled me aside and said that Ron Wood contacted Albert and wanted to bring him and the entire band to Europe to perform in an art gallery for a, an art for a, a, his art that he was going to his he was Ron Wood was into watercolors and he had all these paintings that were going to be on display at this gallery in Paris and he was going to bring Albert King wanted, you know, would you and your band come out and back me up for two weeks in Paris? I can't make this story up, man. This was like, all right, I'm already, I already got to play with BB King. Now I'm in Albert King's band and we're touring. And now, but three weeks in, I get a message that Ron Wood wants to bring us to Paris for two weeks. I was like, I'm going to be a rock star. Right. My head was about to explode. So I'm on a cloud 
uh, I told you that I went to a performing arts high school. We went to Nice, France my senior year. So I had a passport. So when the guys in Albert's band were like, hey, man, you, you know, you're going to need to get a passport. I was like, I got a passport. Like, we're going to Paris. I was like, now I'm going back to France with Albert King. Holy fucking shit. I've only been out of school for a, a year, right? I was losing my damn mind, Rex. So here we are in the lobby. Fast forward, we're in the lobby, and I'm, I'm just like, I'm cocky. I'm just like, yeah, I'm Albert's meeting my parents now or whatever. And so, like, he shakes my mom's hand, gives her a big hug, and then she's like, well, we got to go back in and play a show. It was really nice meeting you folks. And, you know, I tell my mom goodbye or whatever. And they leave, and we turn to go back into the club, and we're walking, and it got real quiet. Put his arm around me again, and he's got a pipe. You know, he's like six foot five, very menacing. You know, he looked like Laurel and Hardy, you know. I'm just like this little kid. This is big black man, and he's got his arm around me, and he's smoking his pipe. You know you're not going to Europe with us, don't you? And I was like, no. He's like, well, you're not. As a matter of fact, tonight you're last night, so play good, son. He pats me on the back. And I've got to go in and play the gig now. Just how you do that. And so I'm on stage, and I'm just like, shit, I just got fired. And I got to play the gig because I needed that 150 bucks or whatever, right? And I'm up here and I'm playing and I'm pissed off and I'm sad and I'm angry. But I'm like, I'm also just like, what the fuck just happened? And Rube, Ruben, Rube, Rube was his nickname, which was hilarious. He said, my, my name is Ru Ruben Fairfax. And my friends call me Rube, which is a combination of my first name and last name. R-U-E-B-A-I-X. Rube. And I was like, fucking Rube. That was the guy that called me on the phone for the gig, right? So this whole three weeks, I'm with Albert. I've been calling this guy Rube. So Rube, he's very astute, right? He was in Al Green's band and played with all the legends. And he was just like, this tall, thin brother. And, and I remember he's playing and he looks over and he sees me looking at somebody and then he looks over and there's a guy sitting on the side of the stage, like right off the right next to the stage white dude with long black hair and this mean scowl on his face and he's staring directly at me and Ruben's like looking at him and he's looking over at me and he's laughing he leans down and says like, hey motherfucker and I'm like I'm like he's like you see that motherfucker over there staring at you and I was like yeah he's been looking at me all day long he's like you have any idea who that motherfucker is and I was like no he said that's your motherfucker replacement <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the chip instantly just like boop, gone you know and and that was that was a really really wonderful experience um i i needed to get knocked down a couple of notches you know and and the people that ushered me into that scene in in the music scene in memphis back back then were also my mentors and they would let me know, hey man, you know, you're getting a little too cocky for your own good. And I I had some experiences after that too where, you know, I realized that I needed to just like take it down a notch because like, you know, you can be on top one second and the very next day you're going to be back working at the record store, you know, trying to, trying to make ends meet. So, you know, you got to have a, you gotta, you gotta have a good attitude in this, in this business. I mean, just, just, yeah, you know, it's just a life lesson too. You know, we should be kind to people. 